Welcome to Zoom and Vroom with the Polk County History Center. Today we are learning about the Ridge Scenic Highway, Polk County's very own Route 66. Ridge Scenic Highway extends nearly 39 miles along the Lake Wales Ridge, connecting communities from Frostproof to Haines City. While a vast improvement over existing dirt roads, the road's nine-foot track was just barely wide enough for a Model T. In preparation for today's Zoom and Broom, please have on hand your packet of materials and a sense of adventure. We're going to hit the roads in three, two, one. Hello everyone and welcome to Zoom and Vroom, coming to you live from Bartow at the PGTV studios. My name is Jamie Jamison and I am the Curator of Education and Visitor Engagement at the Polk County History Center. But more importantly, on the second Saturday of each month, I transform into your Polk County History and Heritage Fairy Godmother. Um, a little housekeeping before we begin today. We expect today's program to last approximately 30 minutes. Can't stay with us that long? That's okay. You can catch us on repeat through PGTV's YouTube page or anytime on Facebook. Beginning in the early 1900s, Polk County drew up plans for an ambitious road project. Unfortunately, the state legislator did not approve funding. Undeterred, the county assumed responsibility for construction costs. At the completion of the project, Polk County had provided 346 miles of paved highway, which included the now iconic Ridge Scenic Highway. Today, Scenic Highway serves the historic centers of several Polk communities and provides access to cultural facilities and historic sites that help promote and preserve the local culture. To discover more about the Ridge Scenic Highway, we've invited Jennifer Nanek, president of the Ridge Scenic Highway Corridor Management Entity. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, I'm glad to be here, Miss Jamie. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. I had to tell you, I um, started my journey in Polk County working at the FFA Training Center on Lake Hatchinaha. And uh, coming in from Orlando, I would drive portions of State Road 17 and think to myself, oh my goodness, this is what Florida's supposed to look like. Yes. There's orange groves and, and hills. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen hills in a long time because I was in Orlando and lakes and it was so beautiful. It was really, you got that feeling of old Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have to know, how did you get involved with the highway and what's your role with it? So I represent Lake Wales, the city of Lake Wales, on the corridor management entity. That is a mouthful. It is a mouthful. <laughs> um, but before, I worked at the Depot Museum, or the Lake Wales History Center, okay. as they call themselves. It's a bright pink building, a very historic spot. Um, and working there, I have learned the importance of historic preservation, not just of buildings, but of scenic vistas, of natural preser preservation. Mm -hmm. um, so Lake Wales and the other cities formed the corridor management entity to advocate for the scenic highway or State Road 17. And so my association with that and learning the importance of preservation got me to, involved in that. And so right now I'm serving as president. Nice. So what, do, what types of activities does the corridor management entity um, engage in to um, promote that conservation and preservation? We have one major activity that we do every year, and that is the annual 39-mile yard sale. Mm -hmm. And it is an event designed to encourage people to drive the scenic highway. Um, we do other things, such as advocate for re historic preservation, restoration, uh, natural areas, but the scene, the yard sale is what everybody loves. We couldn't officially have it last year because yeah. of the plague, but um, 
this year we're all excited to have it again. Oh good, so yes. it is back on it this year. It is back on November 6th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. All right, mm -hmm. so we'll talk about that just yes. a little bit in there um, yes. and make sure everybody gets out their calendars yes. and uh, saves the date. Now, so if you were to talk to someone who's never driven across State Road 17 before, how would you describe it to them? Lots of rolling hills, beautiful scenic vistas including lakes, there's a lot of scrub areas, what we call some of the natural areas. And there's some beautiful, cute, historic, charming downtowns. Um, Haines City, Lake Wales, Frostproof, some historic buildings that, um, that are just so cute. It brings you back to a time and place in Florida when we were just getting settled a century ago. And so you, it's, it's an experience as you drive the scenic highway. Yeah, and I'm so glad you brought up the scrubs um, because that land out there seems to be where we see, um, you know, what's increasingly fewer and fewer of our natural mm -hmm. wildlife, um, including both plants and animals. And it's mm -hmm. just uh, a wonder to see. I know at some point somebody had told me further back off the road that they were able to track panthers through that area. And so it's just a phenomenal phenomenal resource. It is. Um, so this highway is integral to um, a lot of Polk's heritage communities that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, from the 1920s to today, has this road been kind of, I don't, would we call it the citrus, the road to citrus? Have we got a lot of citrus growers there? Yes, there are still some orange groves that you can see as you're driving down the highway. You know, this is the main corridor for transit before we had US 27. Mm. And so if you're transporting anything for any of our old industries, turpentine and lumber, citrus, that's where you would go. The railroad that goes from Haines City down to Frostproof was along this corridor. Okay. Uh, and of course it brought forth the most important part of our industry, tourists. Tourism, or yes. Snowbirds. <laughs> um, that is what uh, built up a lot of our community, such as Mountain Lake, which led to us having things like Bach Tower and mm. Masterpiece Gardens and other attractions that were along the scenic highway. And so I'm glad you brought tourism into it. So we have this road that <clears throat> served a historic industrial purpose. Mm. And today it serves a really interesting multi-use tourism mm -hmm. purpose. Um, are there any like big events that cyclists and runners do for that road that have really impacted tourism and um, downtown Main Street revenue for, for those along the highway? Yeah, um, athletes really like using the scenic highway, especially in Florida. Think of like the Ironman competition in Haines City that they have every mm. year, which includes coming all the way down into Lake Wales. So yeah. you are experiencing a good chunk of the scenic highway. Weber International University in Babson Park for many years had a triathlon that oh, involved wow. bicyclists and runners using the scenic highway. I myself did a 5K race in downtown Haines City, which involved a portion of the scenic highway, and it was awesome. Um, we've had a lot of bicycling events that come through. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's just a beautiful spot if you're into running, cycling, or more importantly, driving, yeah. you can experience the scenic highway. I think driving's where you'll, you'll see me, <laughs> especially right now. I don't know how it just keeps getting hotter and hotter, except it was really nice this past week when it was this dry hot. Mm -hmm. I, you know, people in Arizona know what a dry hot is. People in Florida were like, oh, it's cool at night. Mm -hmm. I really like this. It was nice. <laughs> now, that's not all. It looks like the ridge is becoming an important part of continued land management and conservation. Um, what types of trails or outdoor opportunities can people encounter? Oh, there's several of them. We have the Barbara Peterson Preserve in Dundee that's operated by the Green Horizon Land Trust. Um, in Babson Park area, we have the Ridge Audubon Center. They have their preserve out there with two small yeah. trails that you can walk through. Um, the Nature Conservancy has the Tiger Creek Preserve that's just off the scenic highway. There's also the Crooked Lake Prairie that's just off the scenic highway. And there's a new project going on that Green Horizon Land Trust has got going on, uh, which is another preserve area there in Babson Park. And of course in Lake Wales, you can go and walk the Lake Wales Trail around beautiful Lake Wales itself. Oh, wow. um, back up in Dundee, you can go around Lake Marie. They've got a trail there. Um, so the, yeah, there's plenty of opportunities to see the natural Florida. Wow. It's not as pretty as coastal areas, <laughs> but we still have a lot to offer. It's real Florida that you don't really want to miss out on. Yeah. 
it's a healthy walk, I know. You feel like you can conquer the world after a nice interior Florida walk. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and you mentioned one of them is uh, associated with the Audubon Society, mm -hmm. so is there a lot of good bird watching out there? Yes. Um, so one of the trails goes out to a lake that's out right behind Weber International University, and so there's some good uh, bird watching that you can do there. Uh, and we have a little, there's a little trail guide that they have, okay. and, you can, and it will tell you some of the birds that you will probably see as you walk those trails. So how can the community get involved to support the vision for the Ridge? Well, at the very minimum, participate in the scenic highway, or the yard sale um, on November 6th. Go shop there, or you could open up a booth. Uh, follow us on Facebook, we're the Ridge Scenic Highway. We also have a committee that meets uh, quarterly. We have spots for at-large members, so okay. people can certainly do that. And certainly participate and patronize the downtown businesses and organizations that are along the Scenic Highway. Awesome, so when, if I um, were to come participate in the yard sale, how does that, how does one do a 39 mile yard sale? Oh, well, if you, you can't make all the stops in that whole day. <laughs> but um, so we have official locations along the, along the Scenic Highway, but we have lots of unofficial locations of people who participate. Okay. So uh, it's almost nonstop between downtown Frostproof and downtown Haines City. You'll find all sorts of stuff to stop by and purchase. Lots of treasures. Have yes. um, those guys from the, the picking show, have they ever made it down to the 39-mile yard sale to get some good <laughs> If they have, I have not been made aware of it. I'll have to start petitioning them that they That's need to right. come participate. Um, now, so if I were planning to drive the Ridge Scenic Highway, um, expert opinion, should I start in Frostproof and make my way to Haines City, or start in Haines City and make my way down to Frostproof? I like going from Haines City south to Frostproof. And just because it's my favorite thing to see the Bach Tower coming up over the hills oh. as I'm driving there and I'm looking you know, just out onto the horizon. But you can't go wrong. You can, you can get uh, quite a bit of uh, scenic shots going the other way just as well. Okay, and is there any uh, benefit to going at sunrise, sunset, midday? Maybe just before sunrise, as you see the sun coming up over the hills. It would look beautiful, yeah. That's what I was hoping. I was like, I think sunrise is gonna be mm -hmm. pretty nice. Yep. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna do a you pick Scenic Highway, and I'm going to give you some this or that options, mm -hmm. and you just go with your gut instinct. What would you What would you rather do if you're out there on the scenic highway? Are you ready? I am ready. Go okay, for it. Okay, these are brutal. All right, driving the scenic highway, Jeep or convertible? Oh, if you're in a Jeep, you'd be up higher a little bit, so you could see a little bit more. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Jeep lady, we'll have to get the Jeep and the uh, Judd crowd yes. out there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> more iconic home. Casa de Josefina or the Chalet Suzanne? Chalet Suzanne, you can't beat Moon Soup. Oh yeah, we've got some <laughs> cans at the History Center. I don't think I'll open them now, but they're definitely <laughs> iconic. Okay, favorite lakeside stop. Is it Crooked Lake or Lake Wales? Lake Wales, I go run that trail every Saturday morning. It's yeah? beautiful. All right, free best attraction for the little ones, Lake Eva Community um, or Spook Hill? For little ones, it's Lake Eva Community Center. That's a lot more fun. I've been eyeballing the, the splash pad and yes. everything out there. Yes. Uh, better type of citrus, oranges or grapefruit? Oh, orange, much sweeter. Oranges, yeah, and then <laughs> grapefruit. I know Shally Suzanne has a really famous grapefruit recipe, but I'm like, eh, I'm gonna pass. Yeah, I've never tried that. Okay, this is where, this is where it all comes down to. Friday night football game. Bartow versus Lake Wales or Frostproof versus Fort Meade? I'm a Lake Wales girl. I'd go to the Lake Wales versus Bartow game. Hey, you know, and I've heard, I, I didn't grow up in Polk County, but there's something about the marching band too at Lake Wales that makes it a whole nother experience. The Lake Wales marching band and their Scottish unit are legendary, absolutely. Legends. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jennifer. Um, I've enjoyed learning more about the Ridge. And if you have any questions, um, you can post them in the chat and I'll get with Jennifer to see if we can get them answered. Mm -hmm. Or you can email her directly at uh, jnanek, we're gonna put it at the bottom of the screen here, at lakewellsfl.gov. Lake um, and then of course, follow them on Facebook as well. Yes, at please. the Ridge Scenic Highway. You just yes. type that in the search bar and it'll find it. Yep. And anything else you could possibly need is on their website, uh, www.ridgescenichighway.com. I think we're going to cut to some footage here of us out on the road. Checking it out, Jennifer. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure.
as we alluded to in our introduction, the emergence of the Ridge Scenic Highway in Polk coincided with the proliferation of automobiles across the country. In 1895, there were only four registered vehicles in the United States. By 1910, there were 468,000. In 1913, the Lincoln Highway was dedicated as the United States' first transcontinental highway, traveling from New York to San Francisco. But 10 years earlier, an industrious doctor named Horatio Jackson, a brave mechanic and a begoggled dog, made the drive on dirt, on dirt roads and the open range. Let's check out more. To learn more about the good roads movement across the United States and the inspiration for the first transcontinental highway, we're going to read Jackson and Bud's Bumpy Ride, America's first cross-country automobile trip. This book is by Elizabeth Kohler Pentakoff and illustrated by Wes Hargis. May 19, 1903 the University Club in San Francisco, California. I bet $50 no one can drive across country in a horseless buggy, says one man. Horatio Jackson sits up. Of course it can be done, he thinks. Those new automobiles can do anything. I bet someone can do it, he says. I'll drive from California to New York in less than three months. The wager is on. As the 20th century began, horses pulling carriages ruled the road. Most people didn't think automobiles would ever take over. Jackson wants to prove that the automobile is the country's future. He hires a mechanic named Crocker and purchases a used 1903 Winton automobile. He names it the Vermont after his home state. May 23rd, San Francisco. Goodbye, good luck, be careful, shouts Jackson's wife, Ver Bertha, who will be returning to Vermont by train. Don't worry, my dear, Jackson says. This pretty trusty machine will get us there with no troubles at all. Famous last words. <laughs> About 15 miles later, bump, 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 kaplooey. Just a momentary delay, says Jackson. The other tires are just fine. Hmm. I wonder how the rest of the trip is going to go. You can check out this book from any of the PCLC libraries here in Polk County or your local library if you're watching from out of county. Now, Jackson and Bud might have inspired the first transcontinental east to west highway, but hoteliers and people in the south are more concerned about getting a north to south road. Let's check that out. By April 1915, more than 200 counties from 10 states were asking to be included in a proposed Dixie Highway to link travelers from Michigan to Miami. The Dixie Highway welcomed the tin can tourists of the 1920s through Polk County, utilizing a combination of dirt, brick, and crudely paved roads, with the scenic highway being a finely paved representation. The highway facilitated an establishment of roadside attractions that became the precursors of the well-known tourism sites that have come to define the Florida economy. Adventure-seeking Americans packed up their new automobiles with canned goods, extra tires, lamps, and lanterns and headed for the warm climate of Florida. Come visit me at the Polk County History Center to discover more about the good roads movement in Polk County and to see unique artifacts, including license plates, cameras, and even tourist maps and souvenirs. Well, I think you are ready to zoom out of here and start exploring. Be sure to pick up your driving tour card at the History Center or request a PDF copy to be emailed to you. Traveling with kids? Make sure to come ask for a Zoom in Vroom adventure pack to accompany your drive. This month we're including a road trip ready little wooden car some pinwheels, and a pair of super cool neon glasses. We hope you enjoy discovering Polk's Ridge Scenic Highway. And don't forget to join us on July 10th when we explore the Quad Cities, Polk City, Lake Alfred, Auburndale, and Winter Haven. Until then, happy trails.